Hey everybody, my name is Josh Matacor. I help a lot of people get jobs in IT and cybersecurity. That's basically what this channel is all about. And in this video, we're gonna talk about uh, 10 reasons why it's so hard to get into cybersecurity. But before we get started, me and my team built a lot of free practice exam test banks for almost all of the CompTIA's, like A+, Network+, Security+, Pentest+, Siza+. We also created some for CISSP, ITIL, and we're creating more. Definitely check those out. Um, so just getting right into this, uh, reason number one, um, high demand for specialized skills and that requires a bit more foundation than traditional like entry-level IT. So basically, um, in, or in order to do like entry-level cybersecurity, it's like cybersecurity is like already mid-level, but in order to do entry-level cybersecurity, you have to have at least like most of the time, you have, depending on the domain, you have to have at least some foundation of IT so you know like what you're actually trying to protect and like reduce the risk for. Um, again, it depends on the domain, but requires kind of more skill to get started than in general IT. Reason number two, experience requirements. This is basically plays off of reason number one a bit. For a lot of jobs, people expect you to have some kind of experience before they're going to hire you, even for an entry-level role. There's ways to get around this. I talk about it a lot on my channel. Um, my cybersecurity course has an internship component which helps with experience but you can also like generate your own experience by you know evangelizing cybersecurity on linkedin or creating content or something like this but experience is like one of the biggest like roadblocks for people trying to get into the field um, number three the field is constantly evolving so in my opinion this isn't too bad because the fundamentals of cybersecurity tend to stay the same but a lot of new stuff gets thrown into the field a lot like when attackers learn something new uh the defenders have to learn how to defend against it and then once they do that the attackers will like learn something else new and they'll use it to attack and then we as the defenders have to like figure out how to defend against it um and it's just like ever evolving and it's it can be like kind of a lot but as long as you know the foundations and you can convey those well it will help you a lot when you're trying to break in number four certifications and education this is um, especially for breaking into the field it's kind of you know it's hard to get um, formal education and certification because it, it takes time money and mental energy and you don't need these to break into the field right but everything helps right everything helps from the way you articulate your words in your interview to your the readability of your resume for like ats and humans your clothes like everything matters right but uh certification education it's hard to get it, like takes time and energy five intense job market competition so it's pretty competitive cybersecurity is pr pretty competitive a lot of people want to get into cybersecurity and it, it tends to be difficult and if you don't have a way to really distinguish yourself from your peers you're you're probably going to have a hard time breaking in um a lot of the content on my channel helps you to be able to distinguish yourself from your peers as well as my course but you just need to think about yourself in terms of the employability framework. I'll put like, I'll show that on the screen and just make sure all of your bases are covered and you just have to be better than the next person in order to get hired eventually. So just keep that in mind, right? Um, number six, uh, weird screening processes. So companies get a lot of applications and they don't always filter and screen people in the most effective way, if that makes sense. It's really, easy for you to get dropped if something's wrong with your resume right it if the applicant tracking system is not able to parse your resume even if it's good you'll get dropped and not considered right so you you just have to make sure your resume is like really squared away and then just this sounds really vague but you have to give people a reason to not filter you uh whether or not that's automatically or when you actually like go to the interview because it's possible like you can be like a really good cybersecurity practitioner even if it's your first job but you didn't practice interviewing enough and you like got nervous and then like your iq reduced by 50 percent because you were too nervous and you just did a, did a bad job in your interview right so you have to like really cover all your bases again look at the employability framework make sure you're like maxing these out as much as you can with the time and money that you have right number seven complex and varied skill set so there's a lot of disciplines in cybersecurity. Like if you look at the CISSP um, domains of cybersecurity, there's a lot like, right, like physical, so I'm not looking at it right now, but there's probably like, you know, physical security, security operations, identity and access management, uh, governance, like there's, there's a lot, right? 
there's a lot of different areas of security and it's not like every single job is going to be like only security operations or only vendor management or only identity and access management it's usually like a mixture of a few of those so it can make it kind of hard to um you know focus your studies uh, in my opinion the best way to do this is go really like really hard in one domain in terms of the employability framework and just make sure you're able to convey your ability and passion for that one domain and then you can study a bit in other adjacent domains if that makes sense so when you get to your interview you can articulate yourself well and all that but there's there's a lot of different areas of cybersecurity and makes it can make it hard for uh people to break in because they just like don't know what to study right or either that or people think it's like only hacking right or like only like security operations but there's like a lot right Number eight, a work environment and stress. This is not really related to actually like breaking into cybersecurity, but um, cybersecurity can be pretty stressful, not because like cybersecurity is difficult itself, but there's a lot of, this is my opinion, right? There's a lot of weird personalities in cybersecurity. Um, when you work in cybersecurity, you'll encounter a lot of weird personalities because a lot of your job tends to be like soft in nature. You have to collaborate with a lot of people. You have to do behavior modification a lot of the time, like getting people to be like conduct themselves in a certain way in terms of cyber hygiene or getting them to behave a certain way in terms of like following policies and like rules essentially and it can just be like really stressful that's ultimately why i quit like probably like half my jobs because i i didn't i got stressed from dealing with other people and like trying to like modify their behavior and everything it's more stressful than people think it's going to be and it's for reasons that are different than what you imagine right in my opinion like dealing with humans is more stressful than like a sudden like incident or a sudden like data breach right because I don't know. That's just me. Uh, number nine, too many standards and regulatory frameworks. So there's a, there's a lot of uh, technical jargon in acronyms and stuff. All those like NIST publications, like NIST 853, security and privacy controls, NIST 861, like computer incident handling guide, like NIST 837, which is the risk management framework. There's like a, a bunch of those, right? And it gets confusing, like which one is which, because there's a lot of overlap between all of those different like standards. And then on top of that, you have to kind of worry about like PC. PCI DSS, which is like, you know, protecting credit cards and then uh, HIPAA, which is like health information. And then there's a bunch of, there's just a bunch of stuff that you have to kind of at least be familiar with and be able to talk about in the interview. Um, I'd cover these the best that I can in my cybersecurity course. And I try to make them uh, as interesting as possible, but it's, um, there's just like a lot of kind of non-sexy stuff that you should learn and at least be able to talk about um, in order to get a job. And people just like have a hard time with that, right? Which is, it's understandable. And number 10, finally, um, this is like really under underrated, but the invisible requirement for developed soft skills. So you can be like the best security practitioner in the world, but if you are a dickhead when you get to your interview and you don't know how to talk to people or you can't articulate yourself well, they're going to pick somebody who has mediocre skill, who's like really personable and can accept criticism over you. I saw like somewhere they're talking about like there's a study where if you hire like, you know, an absolute technical rock star, but they're a piece of shit, um, it brings down productivity for like the whole team or whatever, versus if you hire somebody who's like mediocre, but really nice and willing to learn and i'm the same way because i i have employees too i have like 10 employees and a lot of those were hired by word of mouth but but most of the people i hire for my company i i hire like the the person like i hire people who have like aptitude who want to learn who i i think are smart and who are nice because that it's basically impossible to train soft skill right it's impossible and i'm not one for behavior modification like i said i don't want to do that so I hire people who are like already nice and capable and who have conveyed some level of discipline if they have that and then I will I'll hire them and I'll just um, take however much time I need to train them up to do what I want them to do. And uh, I feel like a lot of companies are the same way. They're not going to hire someone who's like completely doesn't know what cybersecurity is, but um, you need to be like really nice and be cognizant of your soft skill. Just look at the employability framework and the stuff I talked about in this video and you'll get like a kind of good idea of how to make yourself better and how to distinguish yourself from your peers. And hopefully that helps you break into the industry um, faster than you would have otherwise. But yeah, hope this helps and we will see you in the next video.